Hi, this is Phil Yanov with Your Day. And we're live and, and on video, so you can actually see us, but you can also hear us as well. So if you're listening on the radio, that's okay. But you can take your uh, web browser and point it over to the Your Day website, yourday.clemson.edu, and you can actually watch the video as well. And what am I doing here? Why did we come out here with a camera and do this thing live? I'm here at Amedion, a data center that's got places all across the state of South Carolina. But let me introduce the guy that's pulled all this together. I'm here with Frank Mobley. Thank you, Phil. I'm glad to be here. Frank, a data, yes. you've got data centers all across the state of South Carolina. So first of all, people don't know what that means. Tell them about what is Amedion. Well, we now have, not, not only across the state of South Carolina, but we now have a data center in Asheville, North Carolina as well. So what that means is we have facilities they're, they're called in a lot of cases multi-tenant data centers. So we have uh, companies uh, really from all over the region. Primarily our customers are, are uh, in the area and, and they like to and oftentimes to maintain their own systems. And so they, instead of building out the infrastructure, which includes generators and uninterruptible power supplies and air conditioning, et cetera, uh, they leverage our infrastructure to, to house their computer systems. It, it provides a, an, added, uh, an added dimension of, of uptime uh, for their systems. So what, the way I get it, I mean, the care and feeding of all these computers at your own place can be expensive and problematic for all sorts of reasons. It might be security, it might be air conditioning and right. all that kind of stuff. So that's why somebody, I guess, typically comes to you. It is. At a core, it's, it's uptime. It's all about uptime and, and keeping systems up and running 100% of the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Part of that is security. Uh, part of that is, is air conditioning and making sure because if... if Probably as much as anything else, our clients have uh, uh, have air conditioners that fail, and and rooms, really, data closets get really hot very quickly. So, uh, so it's environmentals, um, and then then finally, and, and really the most important piece that people always think about is is the power associated with it. So you have redundant power supplies, whether it's feeds from the uh, the electric utility to to generators to uh, conditioning equipment like UPSs. So tell me about that. I mean, what caused you to get into this business, right? There's a lot of things you could do with your time. Why do a data center? What caused me to get into it was a friend of mine uh, back really before data centers were fashionable or before the typical, uh, the typical business person knew what to do with a data center. Um, a, a good friend of mine and a, a colleague called and said, hey, Frank, I'm building this data center. Uh, we'd like for you to come and help us, help us get this thing off the ground. That was in in 99, uh, 1999 he called and, and I said sure and, and really they were, they were set up to cater to this, this burgeoning dot-com boom. So uh, bottom line, as soon as we opened the data center, the dot-com bubble burst and, and uh, we were scrambling for customers. So it was really tough there in the, in the early days. Uh, but things like, uh, really if it can go back, some of, the, some of the success and the reasoning that people leverage data centers today can go all the way back to the, the Enron crisis. when. Uh, when there was a lack of trust between uh, between Enron and 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 their investors, and so uh, Enron kind of spawned the Sarbanes Oxley, Sarbanes Oxley Act, uh, where public companies have to have to um, uh, report, and, and there's some some accountability associated there. So, uh, so Sarbanes Oxley requires public companies to to secure data, uh, and that's followed with with other regulatory acts like Graham Leach Bliley associated with financial institutions, HIPAA associated with healthcare, all require uh, best practice type type care and feeding of data, uh, which most of these people before uh, really didn't think of the security, especially the physical security of data. So uh, in addition to all the all the, the electrical and, and other pieces, we also provide that physical security piece. And that's what it enabled data centers to kind of bridge the gap between the dot-com world and moving into a what is today uh, most traditional businesses, or certainly a large number of traditional businesses, leverages leverage facilities like ours, either for production systems uh, or for disaster recovery and backup systems. So the way I understand, I mean, obviously a lot of large companies come here for a compliance standpoint. Mm -hmm. That's the reason they want their data in a data center. But it's not, is it all just large companies? Are these the only kind of people that use you? No, absolutely not. Matter of fact, <clears throat> I, would, I would say that probably 60 to 70 percent of our customers tend to be what we would call small businesses. A lot of those are associated with, um, they have some kind of online driver uh, that, that they are an internet business. They kind of go back to the day of of, of the dot-com where they are providing a service online. Cer certainly the, the, the whole cloud, uh, the whole cloud movement and software as a service 
uh, ha, ha, means that, that a lot of those folks, they, again, they have to be up all the time. When, when, uh, when people's email uh, is not available, when, uh, or when businesses' email is not available, when, um, uh, when companies can't get to the data, they, they scream and shout now, and people walk around in hallways, they're no longer productive. So they come to us to make sure it stays up all the time. So I've got now, you're in Greenville, Columbia, Charleston, South Carolina, as well as Asheville, That's right. North Carolina. Now, didn't you just make it harder for someone to decide what data center they want to be in? I don't think so. Our, our, our model tends to be, tends to be local. The, the, the majority of our customers, 75% of our customers here in Greenville are in the upstate or within an hour's drive from our data center. Mm -hmm. Same thing in Columbia. And we'll be opening Charleston in the spring, uh, so we expect and really, we expect a higher concentration of local businesses to leverage our Charleston facility because it's going to be a little more difficult for us to go to a business in Greenville and say, hey, let's put your disaster recovery in uh, Charleston. systems in Charleston right. um, for, for obvious reasons. So It'd be a great uh, place to visit. My it family. is. It is. A lot of people said, man, I love to go to Charleston, but I don't know if I can put my <clears> DR stuff there. So we'll be, we'll be primarily working with, with businesses, again, that are about an hour's drive uh, from, from that Charleston facility. And we're in Charleston, we're, we're, we're not on the peninsula per se. We're, we're actually in North Charleston uh, at an elevation of about 50 feet. So we're on- we're, It's a practically we're, a mountain. We're Mount Charleston. That's exactly <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> so. Oh, very good. Um, why, so that is the reason then for having multiple data centers is so that people locally can drive to and either load data or whatever on their servers. That, that, that's exactly right. That's our, our primary reason for having multiple data centers is because we, we cater to the local market. We cater to what I call server huggers who, who like to be there, who like to manage their systems, who uh, when something goes wrong, they like to be there. They like to take care of it rather than, than depending on someone else. Now we can help them do that. But we're, we're a face-to-face -face kind of company. We have people out selling uh, and talking to people so, uh, so they know who they're dealing with as opposed to doing something on the internet and, and really not having a personal type service there to, to help them. So we do, we, we certainly uh, uh, focus on the local market, but it also gives us, the multi-location also gives us the ability to provide disaster recovery services for a Greenville-based company in our Columbia site or for a Charleston-based company in our Greenville site. Uh, for, or for any of the others in our Asheville site, for example. One of the things I noticed, and of course we've, we've walked through this once before, and we're going to go back through here again and kind of look at some of the stuff that you've got here. But it, when I think of data center, of course, I think of servers on raised floors and mm -hmm. secured rooms with great fire suppression and all that kind of stuff. Certainly, all of that is here. But I right. saw a lot more on the tour than just a server room. I mean, there's you've got facilities for people to load data in and out of there, and I mean, there's a lot of things well, going on here. We, we have we have other rooms. We have rooms here where where customers can come and work and get out of the data center environment. For example, we have a, a disaster recovery, a war room uh, that allow customers who who are in a either uh, practicing their disaster recovery plan or they actually have declared a disaster can come and work uh, while their site is is being taken care of. Um, and then we do have the, the data center room as well that you think of, the prototypical data center with the raised floor and the air conditioning and, and all of that and, and all of the security around it with the cameras and, and et cetera. And I saw, by the way, in the data center, you've got all the wire up on ladder rack, right. up above overhead. I mean, it's sort of like a nerd's paradise back in there. I mean, I guess nobody's is. server room looks as nice as yours. Well, we, we, that's, obviously that's an important piece of what we do. And, and we do, we, we put a, a huge emphasis on, on maintaining neatness. And uh, one thing, it's easier to operate when you, when you do things the right way. Uh, I go back now, I guess, 12 years in, in the data center business, and, and certainly you learn as you go. And, and we incorporate all of those, all of that experience we've incorporated in this data center. And we don't do very much under the floor. And in, in a lot of the older data centers, you'll see data cables are run under the floor. Uh, we, we keep them on, on overhead racks. That helps us keep them neater. And, and over time, we don't develop the old rat's nest that, that virtually all older data centers have under the floor. And what that ends up doing is damming up the air. We use the, the raised floor as a plenum for air conditioning so we can move air where we need cool air. Um, and when you have a lot of wires, et cetera, under there, it tends to, it tends to dam that up and you end up with hot, hot spots. Sure. I mean, and there's a lot of equipment back in there. there I mean, and we're, of course, we're sitting today in the Greenville facility because right. it's convenient to us. Right. But uh, you've got a lot of equipment back in there. We do. But this looks like there might be room for more. There is. There's yeah. room for more here. There's room for more in Columbia. Um, obviously, 
Uh, Charleston will be wide open uh, yeah. when, when we open that. But we also have an expansion plan. We have our data center right now is about 6,000 square feet here. We can add another four to 5,000 square feet, and, and I expect we'll do that in 2012, so we'll expand it. Help me, I just want a, a side topic for just a second mm -hmm. on this. Help me understand where you guys fit into this whole thing. We keep hearing cloud computing yep. from everybody. And is this is this what I'm looking at when I see back here? Is this part of the cloud? Well, certainly we have we have our own cloud offering. Uh, the cloud, I think, can be broken down into three different uh, distinct pieces. One is software as a service, and you see a, uh, a, a solution like uh, um, uh, salesforce.com, for example, where where you have the whole application out on the cloud and you really don't have any of the, the software, there are no CDs to load, et cetera. So software as a service, then another's platform as a service. Uh, Salesforce actually provides a development lab as well uh, that, that companies can go in and build application and deliver it from there. But then what we do is, is, is infrastructure as a service. So we provide processor, memory, and disk to, to companies so they don't have to go out and invest capital in buying their own servers. And they can only, they only have to, 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 to bite off what they need mm -hmm. as opposed, again, to, generally your servers are going to run, it, it, you'll go out and buy a server and it'll run 20% of capacity, 30% of capacity. This allows you to, to better utilize those resources and only spend what you have to spend and, and really spend uh, zero capital dollars. Uh, it's very scalable, lets you, lets you grow up and down. So yes, we do have a cloud platform in there that provides that. Well, I see that from a lot of, I mean, if I were running an IT company today, I think yep. about offerings like yours that allow me, like you said, to, to you know, it's, I think of it as liquor by the drink for IT, right? Yes. I mean, basically, to get exactly the pieces that I need so that I can get that figured out. No, so I, that's a good platform for you. Ne never thought of that analogy, but... Uh, <laughs> that's uh, me. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it, it is. It's, it's, again, it's buy, it's buy what you need or take what you need and... and if you don't need it anymore, we can we can trim it back. If you if you have a hundred gig of disk space and you say, hey, we only need fifty now. We've gotten rid of this piece. We can trim it back. Or more often, they say, hey, we're, you know, our, our data needs are growing, so we need to go from two hundred and fifty gig to a terabyte, and, and and we can provision that as well. It allows you to do it very quickly, also, so you don't have that that gap of time between needing needing something and then uh, going through the process of ordering it, getting it approved, et cetera. So we can we can do that and then getting it shipped from Dell or HP or whoever your vendor has to be, happens Super. to be. Frank, thanks for inviting us in here to uh, take a chance. We're going to go over and take a uh, tour of the facility, take a look around, but thanks for having us over Very here Very good. Thank you for coming by. All right. Thanks, Phil. Phil Yanov with Your Day, and we're going to go take a tour of the data center.